think we've got everyone out of the lobby. Um, so we might make a start. Um, so welcome everybody. Um, my name is Kate Mackey, I'm Acting Director of Arts Tasmania. Um, and I'd like you to welcome you to this webinar, which is on uh, wall space commissions through the Tasmanian Government Art Site Scheme. And to begin with, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands we're meeting on today um, and pay my respects to the Palawa people of Luchawita, Tasmania, as the ongoing custodians of this land and their elders past and present and welcome any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today. Um, so I'd like to thank you for coming to this webinar about our new wall space program. Um, this is the first um, public art webinar we've held in a while, so we'd appreciate your feedback and, you know, any ideas and feedback you have about future sessions, you know, please drop us a line. Um, this session will be recorded and you, you will be able to access a copy of the recording later and it will also be available on our website. Um, you'll be able to include um, comments and questions in the Q&A, so we ask that you pop those in and there'll be a section for questions later on. So I think I'll now hand over to my colleague, Dr Alicia King, who um, is going to take you through this exciting new initiative and tell you a little bit more about the Tasmanian Government Arts Site Scheme. So thank you, Alicia. Thanks, Kate. And thanks for coming, everyone. It's great to see so much interest in the project. I think at last look, we had about 74 registrations for tonight, which is great. Um, I'm Alicia King. I've recently joined the public art team here at Arts Tasmania, and I'll be managing the wall space art projects. Um, just a note before we get into it as well, I'm conscious that there's quite a broad demographic of artists here tonight, so ranging from really emerging to quite established. Um, this session is really a simple introduction to the public art scheme in relation to the wall space commissions, and so it is catered to emerging artists largely. Um, from the huge amount of interest we've had from this session, we'll potentially look at holding other sessions on maybe how to approach more complex commissions or for more established artists. Um, but at this point in time, it's we're really covering the basics. So in this session, I'll take you through a basic overview of our public art program, which is the Tasmanian Government Art Site Scheme. I'll show you some examples of previous wall-based commissions that have been completed through the program. And then I'll talk in detail about the nine commissions we have open through the wall space commissions. So thinking about public art in general, um, public art includes artworks that are commissioned or purchased by government on behalf of the public and displayed in public buildings or spaces. And they can include artwork from a wide range of disciplines, such as printmaking, painting, 2D wall-based artworks, uh, outdoor 3D sculptures and installations, textile works, ceramics, lighting, um, time-based media, etc. So quite broad. And our public art program includes the Tasmanian Government Art Site Scheme and also the Corporate Art Scheme. And you can find more out about the Corporate Art Scheme on our website. Some facts and figures to give you an idea of the scale and scope of the scheme. So the Tasmanian Government Art Site Scheme, or TAGAS, is our state government's public art program. Um, the funding from the scheme, it comes from uh, basically each new Tasmanian government building and refurbishment that costs over 250000 a 2% of the capital works estimate is allocated for the purchase and commissioning of artworks. And the artwork budget for each project is capped at $80,000. Um, important to note that residential housing, maintenance works, roads and bridges are excluded from the scheme. And the scheme is mandated through what's called the Treasurer's Instruction, which basically has the effect of giving legal force to the government's policy. 
uh, launched in 1979. And since then, the scheme has managed over 660 commissions, creating more than 1,900 artworks located right across the state and resulting in a contemporary state public art collection that includes work from a really broad range of disciplines and artists. And the scheme is a major source of government investment in the visual arts in Tasmania. And the investment also flows through to the wider community, not only in the social, educational and health outcomes that we know derive from public art, um, but also to local suppliers as artists procure services and materials as they create their works. So I'll take you through an overview of the general steps in undertaking a commission. And we start off really with the artist brief. It's the key document that we ask uh, applicants to respond to. And it outlines the scope of the commission and contains information on the project's key ideas, um, the purpose, any design considerations, as well as artwork budget and the project timeline. And once we have a finalised artist brief, as well as any supporting documents and plans, then we advertise the Commission on Arts Tasmania's website, as well as in our newsletter and through our social media channels. And advertising timeframes for commissions, to give you an idea, they're generally around four to six weeks duration. So it is worth jumping online onto our website regularly and seeing what's open. Uh, with the application stage, artists are developing and submitting an online application that responds directly to the artist's brief. And when it comes to selecting the artists, we have a selection committee, and that's generally comprised of representatives from the client department, so in this case, the Department of Education, uh, the building users, such as school principals, business managers, teachers, etc. Uh, we have Arts Tasmania, Public Art, our project officers, and often also the building architect. And that committee works together to develop the artist brief, and they also assess the applications against the criteria in the artist brief to determine which artist to commission. Um, at times, if the selection committee can't decide on one artist initially, then they may elect to shortlist two or three artists to obtain some further information. And once a decision has been made by that selection committee, the successful applicant is contacted by the public art officer. We then move along to the grant deed, uh, which is then signed by the selected artist and the director of Arts Tasmania on behalf of the Minister for the Arts. And that deed covers a number of things, including the details of the commission, it outlines what's expected of the artist, and it notes things like insurance, um, risk management considerations, etc. And once that grant deed has been signed, then we can also notify any unsuccessful applicants that they haven't been selected for the commission. So that can take a little bit of time um, to hear back for that to happen. We then move on to the detailed design package with the selected artist. Um, they prepare the DDP, um, which is like a finalised proposal that they present to the selection committee. And that generally contains information like the conceptual ideas behind the artwork, uh, the artwork plans and drawings. Uh, it often also identifies themes, colours, uh, materials, etc., for the artwork. So it's really that final design, artwork design, that gets locked in and signed off on. And once that's been approved by the selection committee, then the artist can begin making the artwork. And the artist makes the artwork, um, as mentioned, in line with that approved design in the um, detailed design package, the DDP. And if the artist wants to make changes to that at any time during the process, um, they'll need to seek approval from the selection committee before they can do that. And throughout the process, the artist is expected to work uh, directly with the project stakeholders. So during the artwork construction and installation, the making phase, uh, and also to ensure that the public art officer is copied in on all correspondence. So you're keeping us in the loop um, throughout the process. 
Uh, once the commission is complete, the artist notifies the public art officer. And then the artwork is uh, inspected by the public art officer, uh, along with the client representative and the building user. And we inspect that artwork against what's in that uh, final approved detailed design package. And once that's been approved, uh, we organise some handover paperwork and then that artwork uh, is officially transferred from the artist over to the client department. And Arts Tasmania also organises an artwork plaque, uh, which we mount near the artwork. And then any publicity uh, of the completed commission can be organised by the artist. So, in a nutshell, that's the process from start to finish as a sort of brief um, overview. Um, and public art officers were involved in all stages of that process. So we're really keen to see as many people as possible have access to commission opportunities. And we try to be as supportive and engaged as possible throughout that process. So I'll take you through some examples of previous works that have been commissioned through our scheme. Um, these examples that I'll show you, they're all 2D wall-based murals because that's what the Wall Space Commissions um, are. Um, however, if you regularly look at our commission call-outs on the website, you'll see that projects with uh, freestanding sculptural works, for example, uh, regularly come up as well. And afterwards, I'll take you through the details of the Wall Space Commissions and how to apply, etc. Okay, so we'll start off with a mural by Mel McVie. It's called Woven Together. It was created in 2023 after the tragedy that occurred at the Hillcrest Primary School. And Mel has a really distinct illustrative mural style and she often uses Tasmanian plants and animals in her murals. Um, she's created a lot of murals at school, so you may have come across one. A mural here by Jarman and Luke Emerton. It's got quite a hand painted feel to it, but it's actually created using spray paint. Uh, it's a really long piece that runs down a uh, corridor. And that's the second half of the work. And this piece is by Jarman as a solo artist. It's a good example of a painting on a surface brick wall. So depending on the site, you may be dealing with different um, surfaces and finishes. Um, and this work is also created using spray paint to have quite a different graphic effect. Uh, we have here a hand-painted mural by Beck Adamsuski, and that's in the Royal Hobart Jack Jumpers Clinic, if you're ever walking through. Um, for this artwork by Tasmanian Aboriginal artist Alan Mansell, uh, Alan hand-painted the pillars underneath the helipad at the Mersey Community Hospital in La Trobe in the north of the state, uh, and his design is based on the story of the yola, the mutton bird, in flight and the importance that the bird has in traditional life of many Tasmanian Aboriginal people. And it's also a good example of a mural painted on a less conventional type of wall, so not on the general flat surface that we think about. Uh, this uh, piece by Ben Booth and Trudy Brinkman uh, from back in 2006. Uh, it's a good example of using a non-standard surface again. So in this case, it's corrugated iron, and they've worked really well with that surface. So the design hasn't been sort of impacted by it, and they've used a really simple design that covers a really large surface area. And the mural here by Jamie Edward. It's at the Adult Community Mental Health Centre and it references Tasmania's unique natural landscape and wildlife and also aims to highlight the beauty of the area and bring in a little of that outside world inside for the people and clients at that centre, which was quite important. Um, some more views of it there. You can see the backdrop of Kunanyi and there's some endemic uh, Tasmanian 
flora and fauna in there as well. And we've got a Tomahern from 2021, and that's at Baghdad Primary School. And Tom has developed quite a distinct illustrative style, um, and he offers use, often uses colour to create dynamism in the work. Um, this is another one that's been hand-painted on a brick wall. Uh, another one of Tom's here, which I've included uh, because it's quite a different style and it's quite different from all of the other works as well. It's a really um, hand-drawn, almost graffiti-like style. Um, you can see the detail here. It's made with um, pen on panel and it's coated with a protective coating over the top to stop it from being graffitied by any students. Um, and anti-graffiti coatings are a really important part of the process um, as a final finish that goes over 2D wall-based works um, to maintain the integrity of those artworks and make sure they don't get vandalised as well. Um, here we've got Josh Foley uh, from back in 2016 at Taruna High School. And Josh, for this work, uh, used a special technique creating a 3D type effect um, with a depiction of waves crashing on the building. Um, the wall work is titled International Orange, and it's a reference to the name given to the classic NASA spacesuit. And to give you an idea of the time frame of a work that size, it took Josh four weeks of very long days to complete. So it's quite a big, quite a big piece of work. Another one from Josh, which is quite different uh, in style and subject, um, and that's uh, up in Launceston. Moving now into some examples of artworks that use vinyl print to make 2D wall murals. Um, this artwork is by Tony Bacic, and it features, um, so it's made using with vinyl printed onto individual panels, and then those panels are installed on the wall. So they're all separate pieces. Uh, here we have Amanda Kay and Jerome Dobinson, who are also known as uh, Third Door Studios. Um, this is from the Launceston General Hospital, and they've created digital graphics here, which have been printed onto vinyl and applied to windows and also some walls that I'll show you. Um, in the paediatric and adolescent mental health ward there. And the work features Tasmanian landscapes, flora and fauna uh, to be engaging for young people in the wards and also intending to bring some of that outside environment feel inside to an otherwise pretty clinical space. Um, you can see here that they've used vinyl in a few different ways. So they played with the opacity levels um, to incorporate some areas of solid colour um, to provide privacy. And there's also some areas of clear vinyl in there to allow for some light to come through and a little bit of visibility. So in this image, the um, areas that look white are actually transparent. So you're seeing into the white walls um, inside that space. Um, so it's a really good example of the different ways that that medium can be used. And another example uh, from that piece um, where they've used vinyl directly on a solid wall, um, but it has, you know, this really painterly sort of um, hand-painted mural effect. Now, this is a piece done by Isabella Teresi uh, in 2023. It's at St Mary's District School. Um, and Isabella designed this graphic illustration. It's of a student from St Mary's wearing the uniform and standing in a stylized landscape of the surrounding area. And the purpose of this commission was quite specific. So it was to create some privacy between two classrooms. So this is normally just a clear glass window between two classrooms. Um, so she's used a combination of clear, transparent and solid vinyl to create this sort of stained glass effect. And it also works um, in a different way when those windows are open and closed. You get these nice sort of layers of um, vinyl across the design. Um, here we've got Caleb Nichols-Mansell uh, from 2023 at Launceston General Hospital. 
Um, Caleb work, Caleb's work explores the politics of identity, land and cultural heritage and what it means to be a Tasmanian Aboriginal man in modern day Lutruwita, Tasmania. Um, and this is also a good example of the way that using vinyl can provide privacy to people inside a building. So the design here is uh, vinyl installed across uh, a suite of glass windows. And here we've got an interesting design. So these pixelated images, um, every square is a painted metal panel that's been attached to a steel fence frame and it depicts Campbelltown landmarks um, using those coloured squares in a really um, Minecraft style. And we've got another piece here by Amanda Kay and Jerome Dobinson. Um, this piece is also a vinyl print on a solid wall there, um, quite colourful. And they've added in an additional layer um, in front of that. So the bright orange and yellow circles that are in front of that on that design are actually um, acrylic panels that have been hung in front of the design. So it adds this really nice layering effect to the print. And the last example here is a piece of Amber Corlick Stevenson's. And it's a great example of a bit of an unusual use of vinyl. So the original artwork for this is an oil painting on canvas. And uh, that's the way Amber generally works. She's a painter. Um, so what she did for this commission was to have the painting digitally photographed and then printed onto vinyl. And that vinyl was then installed onto a panel and then that panel's hung on the wall. Um, so it's another way to think about using vinyl in a non-standard way um, and also how to convert a physical artwork into a vinyl work. So it shows that you don't necessarily have to create a digital design to work with vinyl. Um, you don't need to sort of create digital designs from scratch um, or necessarily be a graphic designer at all to work with vinyl. So we've come to the wall space commissions. We can get into the details. I'll give you some background. So the Department for Education, Children and Young People is upgrading their classroom and learning facilities at schools around Tasmania. So the Wall Space Commission is a 2D wall-based commission and it also allows us to uh, offer a professional development opportunity. So it's presented in partnership between Arts Tasmania and DSIP to support new artists to develop work through the art scheme. So we're looking for artists to create indoor and outdoor 2D artworks for wall spaces in primary and district schools. And each selected artist will have the opportunity to visit the school and create an artwork that responds to the location and that's meaningful to the school students. And the commission is specifically for artists who have not created work through the scheme before. Uh, you don't need to have prior experience with public art uh, commissions at all. Uh, and if you're selected, we'll support you to develop and realise a concept uh, and we'll support you through that process. Um, so you won't be left to your own devices. The project also involves um, professional development for artists through mentoring. So throughout the project, each selected artist will have access to a mentor for two hours of contact time. That can be face-to-face -face or online. And the mentors will be Tasmanian artists who are experienced in creating large-scale murals and who have been previously commissioned through our public art scheme. So they'll be right across that whole process. And it'll be up to each mentor and artist to individually work out uh, when and where to schedule those sessions, depending on where you're located. And we'll be announcing those mentors soon. So the main details of the commissions, we've got nine commissions for artists uh, at schools around Tasmania. 
Um, eligibility, as I said, is for artists who haven't been commissioned through the scheme and who also meet Arts Tasmania's general eligibility criteria, and you can find that on our website. Uh, for the selection process, uh, different artists will be selected by each school to develop a concept, fabricate and install the artwork, and it's across nine schools across the state. Uh, your audience is primary and district school students, staff, visitors, families and members of community. Uh, for the artwork budget, uh, it's a $12,000 budget for each uh, project, uh, which includes your yeah, artwork concept design, fabrication, and installation. And to give you a bit of a rough idea, um, with a $12,000 budget, scale-wise, you can think about um, a scale that's around sort of 10 to 15 square metres. Um, that will depend on each site. And each artist is responsible for managing their own budget, and we can help you through that process as well. So these are the participating schools and you can apply to be considered for multiple schools. Um, the application form lets you choose as many as you like and we really encourage you to apply for as many as you'd like to. Do keep in mind though uh, which sites will be practical for you. So for example if you live in the north of the state perhaps you'd like to nominate all of the schools in the north and vice versa if you're in the south. Um, just to note that artists won't be commissioned for multiple projects. So for your best chance, we really recommend that you apply for multiple sites. Um, however, just as a caveat, in some cases an artist may be selected for more than one if other applications for all the school don't meet their requirements. And also important to note that this is a commission rather than a school-based residency or program, um, so artists are not expected to work with school students to realise the artwork. Uh, and in relation to locations uh, and timeframes, each school will work with the selected artist to negotiate um, where at the school the artwork will best be located and a working timeframe for each project, so that can be individually negotiated through the process. I'll take you through a little snapshot of each school site. Um, so eight of these sites are primary schools. Um, so your artwork should be age appropriate, tailored to a primary school audience. Um, given that target audience, for some artists, this might mean that you propose an artwork that's visually quite different from your general art practice and aesthetic. You might not normally make work that suits a primary school age group, and that's fine. Um, just be sure to explain your proposal clearly, um, provide clear sketches and support material so that the panel can easily understand your approach and be able to visualise your artwork on site and for their audience. Um, also, with these snapshots of the sites, don't focus in too much on the details like the particular wall in the photograph or, you know, whether it's a brick wall surface or, uh, you know, something similar. Um, basically, these, these images are just to give you an idea of the different types of sites. Um, it might be that the school, once they are in discussions with a selected artist, might decide on a completely different wall, um, might be at a different part of the school, or they might decide that they want the artwork to be um, painted on panels that will then be installed on the wall. So, yeah, just keep an open mind when you're looking through these images. It is just here to give you sort of an idea of the different sites and locations. And also in your application, you're not designing work for a specific site or school. It's really just um, an artwork that you'd like to create. Um, so this is Glendu Primary School in Launceston. Um, so they've identified several external brick walls located around the school. Um, to be negotiated with the artist. We've got Havenview Primary School in the northwest. Um, Havenview are a bit more specific in that they've uh, decided they'd like an artist to design an artwork to be printed on vinyl. 
Um, in this case, it's to reduce outside distractions for students when they're in the classroom. So you can see in this image, um, the windows here are covered in yellow paper. Um, that's because the students are getting distracted by what's happening outside. Um, so ideally, the vinyl works will go onto those windows. Alicia, mm -hmm. we've just had a question about whether artists will selected artists will be supported through potential OHS issues for each site. So, for example, if there were scaffolding requirements or requirements mm -hmm. to work at height, do we want to have a quick chat about that one? Yeah, definitely. Um, so every site will be quite different um, and we'll be there to talk you through any of those issues. Um, there, there is some guidance that we can provide in relation to working at heights as well and insurances that you need for that. Um, I'm not sure that will apply to any of these sites, um, but if it does come up, yeah, it's definitely something we can help with. Yeah, and, and also we'd help with the, with the you know, putting the budget together. So if there's additional requirements in terms of um, workplace health and safety and things, we'll make sure that that's factored into the budget and the planning in terms of timeframes and things so that it's kind of reasonable um, within that scope. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Port Dalrymple School in Georgetown is the only school that's not strictly a primary school, so they're kindergarten to grade 12. So as far as the audience goes for that school, they'll work that out with the selected artist at the time. Um, they're open to vinyl or a painted artwork, and at the moment they're thinking it will be an internal wall um, between the cafe and the classrooms. South Georgetown Primary School. Um, they've identified several potential internal and external locations for the murals. And Ringaruma Primary School, um, at this stage they think they'd like the artist to work with vinyl and they've identified a couple of potential locations uh, with a lot of glass windows for that. And Dodgers Ferry Primary School in the south. Um, again, there's several potential sites there for artworks. Um, they haven't worked out particular areas yet. East Derwent Primary School. Uh, there's two potential exterior areas. Um, they're thinking which will be the brick or panel. And Risen Vale Primary School. Um, again, exact locations are still to be identified, but they're pretty sure they'd like it to be an external mural. And Rosetta Primary School, they have an indoor mural at the moment that they'd like to be replaced. So um, that artwork, I think, will be painted on site um, and, yeah, roughly replacing that mural that's already there and potentially another small area around the corner. So that's all of the sites. Um, I'll run you through the basics of the application. Um, you can jump on our website anytime, go to the public art page here, and you'll see the well, the commissions that are open. Um, so at the moment, um, you can see wall space there. Um, to access the application form, um, click on that link. It'll take you to a page with basic details as well as the artist brief and attachments. So you can jump on, have a read through the artist brief. Um, I recommend that you download the application form as a PDF so that you can have a look through it before you start. The artist brief, as far as the application goes, is really your key document. Uh, for this, it's five pages long, contains all of the details related to the commission and what the client's looking for. So make sure that you do read through that in detail and refer back to it as you go through the application. And the artist brief also contains the selection criteria and the program project team will assess the application based on these particular criteria. And so it's really important to speak directly to those criteria in your application text. That's the best way to reach the assessment committee and it makes that job a lot easier as well.
Uh, in the application form, you'll see that we've asked for um, some basic details. So 300 words on how you'd approach the project. Uh, there's 150 words on your arts practice. And there's an image template in here that we'd like you to use to provide your concept design or sketch of a proposed artwork. So you can download that template in the application. It's a JPEG and you can complete the design and then re-upload that form into the application. And the artwork design should really reflect the style of the actual artwork that you're proposing for the school sites. So for example, if you're thinking of working in spray paint or if it'll be hand painted, digital design, etc. Um, so make it really easy for the panel to visualise your artwork as a large scale wall based work. And you can also upload more than one design concept if you want. So you might be interested in proposing something in paint as well as in vinyl or multiples in each. And in the form, you'll identify which schools you're interested in being considered for. Um, you can choose all of them or as many as you like. And you can provide up to 15 examples of your art practice. So those are existing artworks in whatever format you create work in. And this is what the image template looks like. So all applicants need to use this particular template. Um, so it's uniform across the board. Um, it's a JPEG file that you download in that application form. You can edit it using the program of your choice. Um, you can simply insert, you know, cut and paste an image of your artwork into the template, um, however you want to work with it really. And if you have any technical difficulties with that, um, just get in touch. Application tips to consider. So think about who the audience is for your artwork. In this case, um, mostly primary school students. Um, think about the assessors who will be assessing your application. So that's uh, your building users, like your school principal, school business managers, teachers, uh, as well as uh, department project managers from the Department of Education and Arts Tasmania staff as well. And that artist brief is jointly developed by the selection committee assessors and they're really tailored to each project. So proposals which clearly address that brief are more likely to be successful. And also keep in mind, um, selection panel members at the, the building site users, they'll need to live with your artwork for at least 15 years. So think about longevity as well. Also, it's not necessary to write a long application, but do make sure you include enough material to explain your idea uh, with sketches and explain how it relates back to that artist brief. Keep in mind that some panel members won't be familiar with contemporary art practice or theory at all, so do use really plain, accessible, simple language in your application. And our Tasmania program offices include artists. Uh, we have experience with public art projects, um, so we can help you through that application process. Just one point to note that we can't provide feedback on the content of your application, um, but we can help out with all other queries you have about it. Uh, and after the selection panels met um, and they've assessed all of the submitted applications, then we can come back to you with formal feedback uh, from the panel. So we've got uh, an upcoming information session uh, on the practical aspects of how to create wall murals or 2D wall-based works um, coming up on the 1st of August. Um, like this session, it will be recorded. We'll make it available to anyone who can't make it. It'll be a 1.5 hour information session and we'll introduce experienced mural artists Beck Adamczewski and Amanda Kay and they'll take us through the practical aspects of creating murals with paint as well as with vinyl print. So the first session we'll be looking at paint, so physical painting, 
um, focusing on providing practical advice for mural production, uh, for example, how to upscale an artwork, uh, the different materials and processes you might use, uh, wall surface preparations, anti-graffiti coatings, etc., and examples of previous work to visually talk you through that process. And the second part of that session will focus on vinyl. So using vinyl for glass windows and solid walls. And it'll cover things like how to upscale digital artworks, uh, some general information about using vinyl print, preparing data files, uh, pros and cons of working with vinyl, surface preparation, working with print companies, etc. So all of those practical sort of aspects uh, yep. that people who are new to vinyl might need to know. Um, as well as examples of working through a commission from design to completion. And so that will include two 30-minute sessions. Um, we'll have Beck Adamczewski, who is a creative based in Nipaluna Hobart. Uh, she's drawn to the spaces where art and design collide and uses traditional and digital mediums, creating stories for both physical and digital spaces. Um, Beck loves to create for communities. Her mural work is inspired by her home state of Luchuita, Tasmania, plants, animals and wild places, and her work explores our shared sense of place through living and built environments. And we'll have Amanda Kay talking about making wall murals with vinyl. And Amanda is the director of T3D, or Third Door Studios. Uh, she works as a multidisciplinary artist using modern and traditional techniques. Uh, she works primarily on commissions to create site-specific artworks for public space with her life partner, Jerome Dobinson. And spatial relationships within their work create experiences between people and place. They apply colour and design principles to space, endeavouring to establish synergy with our physical surroundings. And responding to the needs of the stakeholders, the local environment and new technologies, Amanda is inspired to create a more colourful environment for people to live, work and play. And there'll be time for a QA and a with uh, Beck and Amanda after those sessions as well. So applications for wall space are due Monday the 2nd of September and we encourage you all to apply regardless of your level of experience. And we've got some time now for questions. Uh, you can also contact me anytime if you have queries that pop up after today. Uh, but if anyone has questions now, you can pop them in the Q&A button. Um, Alicia, we, just while people are thinking about questions, um, can you tell us a little bit about um, who those mentors might be? You know, what kind of um, you know what kind of experience they might bring um, that people that people can access through that for this program? Yeah, so there'll be artists who have completed commissions, um, wall-based commissions through our through the Tasmanian government art site scheme. So. They'll be really experienced in going through the whole process, um, planning, design, those kinds of OH&S issues, um, paperwork, working at heights. Um, yeah, all the sort of general issues that might come up. Um, they'll be able to help you through that process. So um, artists might want to sort of schedule a few different times with them throughout the, the process, beginning, middle and end, or yeah but they'll be a really invaluable um source of information and assistance thanks alicia i've got a question about vinyl artwork um is there support in terms of installing vinyl so with vinyl work it will generally be installed by a contractor so the artist will formulate the design um and in uh, with assistance of the contractor, they'll um, formulate the right design specs, etc., for print. So the design company will help you with that, and a vinyl mentor can also help you through that. Um, but the actual installation of the vinyl artwork will get installed by the contractor. So you don't need to worry about the um, practical side of that. 
Yeah. And then, and there's a couple of, um, you know, really good contractors in Tasmania, aren't there, that, um, that can really help, like, help people through that process, even yeah. if they're not used to working with vinyl. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, just a uh, question, um, another question in the chat. Um, just wondering if we were unsuccessful if in our application, if we'll be given feedback. Yeah, so you definitely will be given feedback. Um, once we have those panel assessment meetings, um, when we go through those, the panel do make notes about each application. So we'll be able to talk you through that feedback. Another question, um, does that contract uh, come into the artist's budget? Yeah, so the contractor fee um, will be something that you'll have to manage as part of your artist's budget. Um, so that $12,000 covers everything from design to completion. Um, a question um, that we've said, artists don't need experience with public art, but would that also extend to artists with limited practice experience, i.e. people new to art in general? Yeah, we definitely encourage emerging artists to apply um, for the program, which is partly why it is a really supported program. Um, so it is a professional development opportunity for emerging artists. Um, and we are conscious that those artists may not have a, you know, a, a really solid portfolio um, and we'll take that into consideration through the assessment process. Uh, do artists need artist ABNs? Ooh, that's I think, a good, I think, good question. I think I can answer that one. So, um, so if you um, if you're planning on having an arts practice and applying for commissions and grants and things, we would recommend you you do go through the process of getting an ABN so that you can um, start start earning money through your arts practice. However, if you um, don't have an ABN to say and you apply for the commission um, at the time of um, and at the time of getting the commission, you don't have an ABN, that you can fill out what's called a statement by supplier. So there's an interim measure. But, um, you know, we would recommend that if you are interested in, in public art commissions and grants and things, it might be worth some, having a look at. Okay. Um, another question, when would the projects actually start? Uh, so when the application periods end, uh, there'll be a period of um, assessing those applications. Um, so I think off the top of my head, um, we thought that those selection processes might be announced September, October. Uh, and then the projects could begin uh, after that time, but it'll really depend on each school um, site and the artist as well. So that can really be negotiated. It's not a sort of set in stone time frame that covers all of the projects. Yeah, that's right. It'll it'll have to do with the availability of um, the so your availability as the artist and also with schools as we know schools have lots of holidays and things so you know in there may not be um you know if if the project is due to start in december and everyone's gone on holidays so, um you know if the details aren't worked out it might need to wait a bit longer so but i think there's the schools um are all quite flexible in this space um and also it it as Alicia said, it is a negotiation. So, um, you know, if it's if it's going to be a time frame that's not going to work for you, you know, we can we can have a talk about if if that's something that's going to be um, viable. And some um, schools, um, some schools, I think, will prefer artists to be on site when students are there, whereas others will prefer it to happen during school holidays when students aren't there. So it really just depends. Yeah. 
question. Um, uh, assuming that Alice would need WWV pay cards being on D in DSIP sites. So um, I can answer that one. Um, so yes, if you are um, on site at schools, you will need to have your working with vulnerable people um, registration. Um, but you, um, if you don't have that yet, um, we'd probably re recommend that you begin that process, but you don't necessarily have to have it at the moment that you apply. Uh, just... Um, another question, will this program be continuing on an annual basis? Um, that, that's a good question. Um, at this stage, this is a pilot program. Um, and, you know, we're running this program because we recognise there's a lot of great artists in Tasmania and we'd really like to get more a more diverse range of artists um, creating work through the scheme. So this is a pilot program to see if we can we can broaden the range of artists who are engaging with the scheme and things. So, you know, through this process, we'll see how it works and appreciate your feedback and things as we go through. Uh, just check any more questions. OK. I think that's it for questions right now. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, we might wrap it up then if there's no more questions. Thanks so much, everyone. I appreciate your time. Um, do get in touch if you have any queries that pop up. Um, our contact details are there, also on Outstaz website. And we're looking forward to your applications coming in. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.